How do you set up a change request tracker for your project so that your team can capture and track change orders more easily? I'm Tony Zink, and this is the Project Guide. Hi folks, Tony Zink here, project management author and trainer and creator of the Project Manifesto. I show people how to use tools and techniques to get better results faster on their projects, whether that means saving time, saving money, reducing risks, or providing a more stress-free and pleasant experience for everyone involved in your project. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing or following me on this channel. And if you're not tuning in directly on my website, TonyZink.com, then you can go there to get the video for this episode and others like it, the audio podcast for this episode, the entire written transcript, and other goodies too. Have you ever lost track of customer requested changes during the course of a project, so you ultimately delivered something that didn't meet the customer's needs or expectations? Have you ever lost profits on a project because your customer asked you to make design change after the work was underway, but you didn't ask them for more money to cover their requested change? Maybe your customer has become frustrated with you because you surprised them at the end of a project with an extended timeline or a higher price tag than you originally told them, all because they asked you to deliver something different from what you originally agreed upon, but you failed to explain the time and cost implications of their changes. Customers often ask for design or scope changes in the middle of a project, and these changes can cause major problems that you and your project team are forced to deal with. Project teams run into this all the time when customer change requests are not captured and tracked in a central location, with no structured process for evaluating the effects of these changes, reviewing these changes with the customer, and getting their approval to proceed, having understood the impacts to the project. Problems like these can be prevented though, or at least greatly reduced, by creating a project change requests tracker, storing in a central location, and sharing it with your project team and your customer. People have been using change requests or change order logs for decades. The typical method is to create a document table or a spreadsheet with rows for each change request and columns indicating the types of information that you want to track for each suggested change, such as title, description, and so forth. These logs are often stored on someone's hard drive and shared via email, and we end up with problems like, who has the latest version of the project change orders log? Or, I need to see the latest status of change order XYZ, but Ted is working on it and he's in training all week. This is where online worksheet and list tools help us with our centralization problems and our mobility problems. An online worksheet and list tool is an internet-based service that allows you to store, organize, and share tables and lists of information in a central repository and access them with nearly any type of internet-connected device. We can use online worksheet and list tools to manage project-related information such as change requests, issues, risks, action items, decisions, and other types of structured information that you can organize into a list with rows and columns. Some of the more popular services are web-based, so your team members don't need to install any special software on their PCs or mobile devices. All they need is a web browser, as long as you've given them the permission to access the information. Online worksheet and list tools are fantastic for project teams because project information is accessible from any internet-connected computer or mobile device, such as smartphones or tablets, so team members can access their information from the office, from the field, from the airport, or from home. Like spreadsheet files, these tools give you the ability to store your structured project information in sets of rows and columns, so you can then easily sort, group, or filter to see the information exactly how you want. So, want to see all the open change requests? No problem. Want to see all overdue change requests? No problem. Want to see all the change requests that are assigned to you for follow-up? No problem. 
These tools offer a great alternative to sending written emails with change request information or sending documents or spreadsheet files to people by attaching them to emails so important lists or records don't get lost in your email inbox or junk mail folder. Therefore, everyone on the project team has easy access to the latest information even if someone else is making the updates. Because everyone is working out of the same repository, there's no confusion about who has the latest and greatest version of a file or an email because everyone has the latest information. And finally, the project team's lists and records are stored in a secure repository so no one can access them without having the right login credentials that you've given to them. I'm going to share with you a four-step process for setting up a tracker using an online worksheet or list tool that you can use as a single repository for all of your project change requests. You should be able to follow these steps regardless of which worksheet or list tool you choose to use. Step number one is to select an online worksheet or list tool. There are several online worksheet or list tools available today, and some of them are free or fairly inexpensive. So spend some time picking the right tool for your business and for your project team. Different tools have different sets of features and functions, and different project teams have different needs. So you'll want to line up your needs with the right tool. Determine the needs of your project team in terms of the types of change request information that you'll be tracking, such as embedded files or images or icons, the amount of information that you'll be tracking in terms of numbers of rows and columns, formatting requirements, platform compatibility, such as Windows or Mac PCs or Android or iOS mobile devices, and so forth. Some worksheet and list tools may have restrictions in some of these areas, so you'll want to find out if you have any special requirements that can't be met by any of the tools that you're considering. For example, you may need to embed large photos or CAD files that some tools can't easily handle. Also, determine your budget for implementing one of these online worksheet or list tools. Some tools are free, but others charge a fee for you to use them. The options that cost money typically include more sophisticated features or they have more storage capacity. Research some of the available tools, their features, their reviews, and their pricing, including any tools that your company may already use. You may be surprised to find that another department or team within your company already uses one of these tools, so ask around. You may be able to share the one that they're using, if it meets your needs, or at least get some candid feedback from them about their experience with that particular tool. Select two or three of the top tools that you think may meet your needs, test drive them for a period of time, and make a final selection. If you'd like some suggestions for online worksheet or list tools to check out, you can visit my website, TonyZinc.com, and download my free project tools resource guide. Step number two of my four-step process is to plan out the change request data structure and naming conventions. Once people start using your new online worksheet or list tool to keep track of all of their project change requests, it can quickly turn into a disorganized dumping ground where it becomes increasingly difficult to find the information that you need when you need it. If people can't find what they're looking for, then they'll quickly abandon the tool and resort to other methods that they're already familiar with. They'll resort back to storing information in files on their PC hard drives and sending them to one another via email, which is what has caused the problems in the first place. To prevent this from happening, we need to keep our change requests tracker clean and organized. Set up a standardized set of columns, or attributes, for everyone to use for tracking their change requests and restrict the creation of new columns if you can. In other words, create a standardized set of columns such as title, description, date requested, person assigned, decision maker, project impacts, outcome, and date closed. If you'll be tracking change requests for multiple projects in the same tracker, then include a column for project name. Like the other attributes that you've identified, the project name attribute will allow you to search, sort, and filter your list of change requests based on project. To make it easy for people to find and understand the items in your change request tracker, create rules describing what kinds of codes or keywords should be used in the names, as well as rules describing minimum and maximum name lengths. 
It can be quite annoying when you're looking through a large list of change requests that other people have entered and you can't understand what you're looking at because they use cryptic names for everything. If your online worksheet or list tool has pick list features, then I highly recommend turning them on and using them. This will allow you to standardize the information that people are entering into the columns for any given change request by forcing them to pick from a list of values that you provide rather than allowing them to type in anything they want. For example, rather than allowing people to manually type a status for each change request, perhaps you can create a list of status values for people to pick from, such as requested, under evaluation, approved, and declined. Step number three, grant access to the project team. Now these online worksheet or list tools have security mechanisms in place to allow only the people who you specify access to your information. You'll need to set up a unique ID or account for each person on your team who needs to access the online change requests tracker. This allows you to control who has access to the tool and if someone leaves the company, you can shut down their access without affecting anyone else. When everyone has a unique ID, then you can also see what each person is doing in the tool and you can see who made updates to the change request record that you're interested in. Software or apps typically won't need to be installed on team members' PCs or mobile devices, but you should probably test each person's device to ensure that there are no compatibility issues with their device and the tool that you've selected. Remember that you can grant customers access to your change request tracker as well. If you want to do this, then you'll need to give them their own unique account so that they can access your project information. The fourth and final step of implementing a project change request tracker is to train your project team members and communicate your usage policies. Once you've selected an online worksheet or list tool, planned out the data structure and naming conventions, and granted people access, it's time to officially roll out your new change request tracker to your project team. First of all, don't assume that people will automatically know how to use the new tracker. Although these tools are typically pretty easy to use, set aside some time to give your team members an overview of the new tool and how to use it. For example, if your new tool provides automated change request routing for reviews and approvals, then teach everyone how to use that feature to make their lives easier, since that may be new, a new concept to some people. Train them also on the standards that you've put into place, such as data structures and naming conventions, and what other types of things are allowed or not allowed. Instruct them not to share their login credentials with anyone else, whether they're customers, vendors, or other employees, since this will put your project and your company's information at risk. If someone needs to access your change request tracker, then they need to have their own credentials set up. No sharing should be allowed. Rules and policies are usually created for a reason, to protect your company and to make everyone's lives easier. So to wrap up, if you follow these four steps to set up an online change request tracker for your project, select an online worksheet or list tool, create change request data structure and naming conventions, grant access to the project team, and train your team members and communicate your usage policies, then you should minimize frustration and profit losses because of change requests that were not properly captured, evaluated, and approved. You should stop losing track of change requests in email inboxes and junk mail folders. You should have an easier time tracking down the latest status of all of your project change requests. And you should have the ability to easily see or update a change request whenever you need to, regardless of your location. So thanks for tuning in and spending this time with me. I hope that you've enjoyed these tips and that you find them useful. I'd like to take a quick moment though and remind you of these two things. Number one, if you're not tuning in directly on my website, then you can visit my site at TonyZink.com. You can watch the video and others like it. You can listen to the audio podcast. You can read the entire written transcript and find other goodies there too, such as my free project tools resource guide. And number two, please post your thoughts in the comments section. Do you have any questions, tips, or recommendations that you'd like to share? How do you handle situations like this? Some of the best questions and tips come from the folks like you, project management community, the people who are out there in the trenches every day working on projects. So definitely connect with everybody down in the comments section. 
And until I see you next time, go back out there and keep building great things.